Welcome back to the Solutions Manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 2-50 from R.C. Hibaler Engineering Statics 15th edition. According to this problem, the four concentric forces act on the post, determine the resultant force and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Now to solve this problem, first of all, we have to resolve the forces into their components along the x and the y-axis. So for F1 force, we have a horizontal component and a vertical component. For F2 force, we have a single component which is directed in the positive y-axis, so we don't have to resolve it. For F3 force, we have a vertical component and the horizontal component. For F4 force, we have a horizontal component and the vertical component. So let me label them. But before, let's extend these force vectors. Now that looks more de well defined. All right, let's label them. So the vertical component of the F1 force is F1 sin 30. And the horizontal component of the F1 force is F1 cos 30. For the vertical and the horizontal component of the F3 force, we have to consider this 5, 12 and 13 triangle. So the vertical component is F3 and the ratio of adjacent which is 12 over the hypotenuse which is 13. And the horizontal component is F3 and the ratio of opposite which is 5 over the hypotenuse which is 13. Now, if this angle is 60 degrees, it means that angle is 30 degrees. Because for a quadrant, the angle is 90 degrees. So the horizontal component of the F4 force is F4 into cos 30. And the vertical component of the F4 force is F4 sin 30. So, so far we have resolved all of the forces into their components. So now we can apply summation of forces in the x and in the y direction to find the horizontal and the vertical components of the resultant force. So for the horizontal component of the resultant force, we have FRx, I'm considering the right hand side as positive, is equals to summation of forces in x direction So we have F1 cos 30 plus F3 and the ratio of 5 upon 13 minus F4 cos 30. If we substitute the values, we would have FRx is equals to F1, F1 is 300 cos 30 degrees plus F3, F3 is 450 newtons, so 450 and the ratio of 5 upon 13 minus F4, F4 is 250 newtons, 250 into cos 30 so FRx becomes 216.5 And since we are getting a positive answer, so it means FRx is directed in the positive x-axis towards the right hand side. Now we have to do the same for the vertical component of the resultant force. So we have FRy, I am considering up direction as positive, is equals to summation of forces in y direction. So we have F1 sin 30 degrees. plus F2 minus the vertical component of the F3 force, so F3 and the ratio of 12 upon 13 minus the vertical component of the F4 force, so minus F4 sin 30 degrees. So substituting the known values, we would have FRy 
is equals to f1 sin 30, which means 300 sin 30 degrees plus f2 and f2 is 600 newtons minus f3 is 450 newtons, so 450 into 12 upon 13 minus f4, f4 is 250 newtons into sin 30. So upon simplification, FRY comes out to be 209.6 newtons. And since we are getting a positive answer, it means FRY is directed in the positive y axis in the upward direction. So now we have to find the magnitude of the resultant force so we can use the Pythagoras theorem. So we have for magnitude FR equals to square root of FRx square plus FRy square is equals to square root of this is the FRx so 216.4 square plus this is FRy so 209.6 square so the magnitude of the resultant force comes out to be 301.3 newton So this is our first answer. Now for the second part, we have to find the direction of the resultant force measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So if I draw the resultant force, then it would look something like this. This is the positive y-axis, this is the positive x-axis. This is the negative x-axis and this is the negative y-axis. So frx is directed in the positive x-axis. Fry is directed in the positive y-axis. So by the head-to-tail rule of vector addition, this is frx, this is fry, and the resultant can be drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. Let's label them. This right here is fr, this is fry, and this is frx and since we have to measure the direction counterclockwise from the positive x-axis it means we have to measure this angle let's call this theta so we can calculate the angle theta using the trigonometric ratios so we are going to use the ratio of tan theta equals to opposite which is fry over the frx and we just have to use their magnitudes so tan theta is equals to FRY which is 209.6 over FRX which is 216.4. So theta is equals to 10 inverse of 209.6 over 216.4. So if you take the 10 inverse of this value, then the angle theta comes out to be 44.1 degrees. So this is our second answer. So this is it for this problem. I hope you would find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any questions or any doubts, then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you.